Okay, tutorial three, question one. A liquid flows into a five meter cube tank at the flow rate of three kilogram per second and leaves at a rate of two kilogram per second. Initially, there is one meter cube of liquid in the tank. Question A, is the process transient or steady state? Question B, is it batch, semi-batch or continuous process? And C, write a mass balance for the process in terms of the general balance equation. So first of all, given a question, we should uh, draw a diagram to visualize the problem. So you have a tank, a five meter cube tank. The inlet flow rate of, um, into the tank is the three kilogram per second. And the outlet flow rate is two kilogram per second. And there is initially one meter cube um, of liquid in the five meter cube tank. So we're gonna do question A and C together because when we write the mass balance of the process then we will know uh, whether the process is transient or at steady state. So the general mass balance equation is inlet minus outlet plus generation minus consumption equals to accumulation. So this uh, tank here is just flowing liquid so there is no um, reaction, there is no generation and consumption. That's the, we are left with accumulation equals to inlet minus outlet flow rate. So this accumulation term, we can uh, replace it with something much simpler in mathematical form, the MDT, rate of change of mass per unit time, equals to in, in is 3 kg per second minus outlet is 2 kg per second. So we have here the MDT equal to 1 kilogram per second. So looking at the mass balance equation of this process, dm dt is not equal to zero. Thus, it is a transient process. It is not a steady state process. And then question B, classify the process as batch, semi-batch or continuous. So in this tank, flowing liquid continuously being fed and continuously being withdrawn from the tank, Thus, the process is a continuous process. Question 2 of tutorial 3. Aqueous solution of sodium chloride with given density 2160 kg per meter cube enters a 4 meter cube tank at a rate of 12 kg per second and is withdrawn at a rate of 9 kg per second. The tank is initially half full. Question A and B, we're going to do it together to see whether it's transient or steady state by writing a mass balance equation for the process. And then we're going to do question C to determine the time it will take for the tank to overflow. Okay, so let's draw a diagram first. So this is your tank with the inlet flow rate of um, 12 kilogram per second an outlet flow rate of 9 kg per second and the tank is initially half full so here you have the liquid at 2 uh, meter cube but you know the total volume of the tank is um, 4 meter cube so let's uh, write mass balance equation for the process and determine whether the process is transient or steady state in minus out plus generation minus consumption equal to accumulation and then the, there's no reaction so generation and consumption term equals to zero accumulation term we can write in terms of the mdt rate of change of mass per unit time in minus out so this in minus out term you can uh, just straight away key in the numbers 12 minus 9 everything in kilogram per second so the mdt is the rate of accumulation of mass in the tank is 3 kilogram per second so since the mdt is not zero it is a transient process okay Okay, so for question C, we want to determine the time it will take for the tank to overflow. So as we know, the tank is initially half full. So the tank um, initial volume is 2 meter cube. So we know um, the MDT is equal to 3 kilogram per second. 
and then um, we are given also the volume is from 2 meter cube and it will start to overflow when it reaches um, 4 meter cube okay okay you should take into account the uh, significant figures and stuff okay but to make the calculation here um, quicker I just not um, don't consider the significant figures now okay so the DMDT 3 kilogram per second and then we can we are, we are given the row the row the density is 2160 kilogram per meter cube so here the dm equals to 3 kilogram per second um, dt then we want to find out from v equals to 2 meter cube to v equals to 4 meter cube and then from time equals to 0 until time equals to t so we want to find out the t Okay, so um, we only have the terms in terms of uh, density and volume. So we know mass equal to rho v. So we can write down the m here as d rho v equal to uh, t equals to 0 to time equals to t 3.00 kilogram per second dt. Here is from 2 to 4. Uh, meter cube and um, assumption here is the density is uniform and constant throughout the tank so we can take out the density term to be a constant so we can take out rho and integrate the dt from uh, dv from 2 to 4 and integrate uh, from time equals to 0 to time equals to 3 3 kilogram 3 dt okay and then you can continue the calculation Rho is 2160. When you integrate dv, you get v from 2 to 4. And when you integrate dt, you get um, t. And don't forget the t, 3 here from 0 to t. So here, you get 3t equals to 2160. Uh, 4 minus 2 is 2. Then you can solve for t. And... Uh, T equal to 1440 seconds or 24 minutes. But I would advise you to leave the answer um, here because your question, you have three significant figures, the smallest. So you may want to leave the answer at the second here or you may want to make it more explicit in terms of three significant figures by writing it down in a scientific notation. Okay. Okay, moving on to question three of tutorial three. You have 1130 liters of mixture A containing 75 weight percent of ethanol and 25 weight percent water with the given specific gravity 0 0.877 blended with a mixture B with composition of 40 weight percent ethanol and 60 weight percent water with the specific gravity of 0 0.952. The goal is to produce a blended mixture which contains 60 weight percent ethanol. Of course, the rest is water. Determine the required volume of mixture B in liters. Okay, the trick of this question here is that you are given the question are given in volume. Okay, volume of mixture A and you want to find the volume of mixture B in liters such that when you mix A and B, the blended mixture will contain uh, 60 weight percent ethanol. So the percentages here, the composition here are given in mass composition rather than volume composition. So we should be consistent throughout our calculation to do balance on the mass of the mixture. Because when we do material balance, when we do mass balance, we are using the principle of conservation of mass. Mass cannot be created or destroyed. So it is safe to do balance on the mass rather than volume. So anyway, to start the problem, uh, we, of course, draw a picture, draw a diagram. So you have a uh, mixture A. So this mixture A here, the volume is 1130 liters. And then you, the composition here is 75 weight percent of ethanol and the rest water. 
H2O and the specific gravity is 0.877 thus the density is 0.877 kilogram per liter then mixture A is blended with mixture B so this mixture B here um, you don't know the volume this is what you want to find so you can put VB and then the composition here is 40 weight percent of ethanol and 60 weight percent of water and specific gravity 0 0.952 you can convert that straight away density B equals to 0 0.952 kilogram per liter okay here is density of A so when you mix this A and B together you want to get this blended mixture um, whatever the volume is, is here volume total or better use the mass let's use M mass uh, total okay total mass and the composition of this mixture blended mixture is um, 60 weight percent of ethanol and 40 weight percent of water okay it's not given the uh, specific gravity of this final mixture so you have illustrated the problem by drawing a diagram so i would start by converting everything into mass so for mixture a for mixture a um, i would define the mass of mixture a um, ma equals to rho of a uh, times the v volume of a equals to 0 0.877 kilogram per liter time the volume of a is 1130 uh, liters so i get ma equals to 991.01 kilogram then i want to do the same for um, mixture b so m of b mass of b equal to rho of b times v of b but i don't know the v of b but let it be so rho of b is 0 0.952 kilogram per liter times v of b in liters and m of b is 0 0.952 vb in the unit of kg then i can proceed to do balance on the total mass balance so when i mix a and b together i can get an overall balance or the total mass balance of ma plus mb equals to m total ma is 991.01 mb is 0 0.952 vb equal to mt everything here uh, in, is in the unit of kilogram and then i can either do a balance on ethanol or water but um okay doesn't matter which one but i can I'm feeling like doing ethanol balance so let's do balance on ethanol so from mixture A there is 75 weight percent of ethanol 0 0.75 times the total mass of mixture A 991.01 and from mixture B there is 40 percent of ethanol so 0 0.4 times uh, mass of B is 0 0.952 VB equal to the final mixture the the composition of ethanol in the final mixture is intended to be 60 percent so 0 0.60 times the total mass mt so you can simplify the, this equation by um, you know calculating it in the calculator so here is 743.2575 plus 0 0.3808 times VB um, equal to 0 0.60 MT. Okay, so 743.25. 7, 5, okay. Then um, from here, your goal is to find VB, 
okay you want to find vb so here you have two equations and two unknown so let me highlight what are the two equations this is equation one and this is equation two so you can substitute equation one into equation two to just replace the empty so that everything will be in terms of vb and then you know you use your mathematical skills to find out what is vb and finally you get vb equals to 780.73 liters or you can give the answers correct to three significant figures 781 liters of mixture b to be mixed uh, to to get so that you get the total mixture final mixture with the blended composition of 60 weight percent of ethanol question four of tutorial three so 1000 kilogram of a 10% by weight sodium chloride solution is concentrated to 50% in a batch evaporator. Calculate the product mass and the mass of water evaporated from the evaporator. So first of all, draw a diagram. So you have an evaporator. It's a batch evaporator, but um, let's draw a pseudo inlet and outlet stream so that you can imagine what is being removed from the batch evaporator so imagine you are inputting 1000 kg of a sodium chloride solution and in this sodium chloride solution um, let's put the weight per weight mass fraction you have 0 0.10 and 0 0.90 so the 10% is sodium chloride and ACL and the rest should be water. So this batch evaporator shall remove water. Okay, so here is purely H2O. And then the product, the product of the batch evaporator after you know removing the water you will have a more concentrated solution of sodium chloride with 50% of sodium chloride instead of 10% sodium chloride. You have now 50% sodium chloride in the product. So here, um, you don't know the mass yet, but you can put the weight per weight concentration in terms of mass. So 50-50, 50% of NaCl and 50% of water. So for the unknown, you should put something. Although you don't know, but you want to find out, so you put unknown. So for the mass of water evaporated up here, you can put M1 kilogram. And for the product mass, i.e. the concentrated sodium chloride solution, you can put M2 kilogram. Here your goal is to find both M1 and M2. So you can do a total mass balance or overall mass balance. So initially you have 1000 kilogram but this 1000 kilogram will be conserved okay so 1000 kilogram equals to um, m1 kilogram of water evaporated plus m2 kilogram of concentrated and acl solution so this is one equation then you can do a balance on an acl as well so uh, initially you have 10% of NaCl in the 1000 kg of solution. So you have 0 0.10 times 1000 then equal to um, there is no NaCl in the evaporated water because the M1 only contains purely water. So NaCl only appears in M2. So then 0 0.5 times M2. So here you have one equation, two equation. So from equation two, you can find out M2 straight away. So M2 here is 200 kilogram. And then once you know M2, you can put in equation one, the value of M2 to find out what is M1. Okay, so let's do that. Um, 1000 equals to M1 
plus 200 because M2 is 200. So now M1 equals to 800 kilogram. So to answer the question, the product mass, the product mass is um, the concentrated NaCl solution. The con product mass is M2, 200 kilogram. And the mass of water evaporated from the evaporator is M1. So this is the final answer. So you should specify, okay? Don't just put M1 equals to what, M2 equals to what. Uh, you should answer what the question wants. Okay, final, un final question for tutorial 3, question 5. A manufacturer blends lubricating oil by mixing 300 kg per minute of oil P with 100 kg per minute of oil Q in a tank. The oil is well mixed and is withdrawn at a rate of 380 kg per minute. Assume the tank contains no oil at the start of the blending process. How much oil remains in the tank after one hour? Okay, you know what to do. The first step is to draw the diagram. So you can draw the mixing tank. So this is your mixing tank. You have oil P coming in at 300 kilogram per minute. And then you also have um, oil Q coming in at 100 kilogram per minute of P. This is of, no, no, okay. This is of Q. This is of P. Okay. So this is your mixing tank, it's mixed and then it's being withdrawn at a rate of 380 kilogram per minute. So you want to find out how much oil remains in the tank after one hour. So you use the general mass balance equation in minus out plus generation minus consumption equals to accumulation so you know there's no reaction no generation no consumption so accumulation you can put in terms of dm dt equals to in minus out in is um, 300 plus 100 kilogram per minute minus out out is 380 so dm dt is 400 minus 380 is 20 kilogram per minute so you know for each minute there is 20 kilogram of oil accumulating in the tank so after one hour one hour is 60 minutes. So you, you, you can find out how much oil remains in the tank, how much oil accumulates in the tank after one hour. So I let you find out on your own. How do you want to find out? I'm just going to give you my final answer. So the mass of tank remaining in the tank, I mean the mass of oil remaining in the tank after one hour equals to uh, 1,200 kilogram we don't know whether the tank will overflow or not because we don't know the capacity of the tank but this is the answer if you leave it after one hour with the rate of it accumulating each minute um, there will be 1200 kilo, um, kilogram of oil in the tank all right so that's all please attempt all these tutorial questions on your own without looking at the solution and um, can ask any questions in the whatsapp group or email me Okay, all the best. Thank you.